Hey everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in tonight. This is my first live, so I'm a little bit nervous. I think I might pee my pants, but I'll try really hard not to. <laughs> but for the most part, I'm really excited. Um, if you're tuning in, tonight we're talking about what is solo travel? Like, what the heck does that even mean? Um, and we're gonna talk about kind of a few different ideas of what solo travel actually is. So you might be sitting there thinking, well, I already know what solo travel is. Solo travel is me going on a trip by myself and that's pretty much it. Seems pretty straightforward. Um, but the surprising part is there's kind of a lot of different ways that you can solo travel the world that don't quite fit that one definition. So I know for me personally, I was kind of in the same boat. Um, I also thought that solo travel was just, I'm gonna book this one-way ticket, I'm gonna go somewhere, and I'm basically gonna just spend all of my time by myself. That's it. <laughs> and that was kind of scary. Um, I'm not really the kind of person that spends too, too much alone time. So to me, I was like, well, that doesn't really sound all that exciting. So what I found out over the years is that solo travel actually means a lot of different things. And the types of travel that I was doing before that I thought weren't solo travel actually kind of are. So we're going to go through a few different kinds. Um, I have my laptop open in the side, so if you have any questions or anything, um, feel free to ask away. I'm here to answer any questions. And if I don't get to them right now, I'll definitely make sure to answer all the comments after. So make sure to ask as many questions as you have. Um, so. First of all, solo travel, like what exactly does that mean? Why is it such a big buzzword right now? Um, I read this article recently that actually said the term solo travel, like typed into Google, has gone up like 52% in the last two years. And that's crazy. Um, it means a lot of people are interested in it, but from what I found, there tends to be like pretty narrow definitions of what that actually is. So the first idea of solo travel is yes, you go and you go traveling by yourself, you get on that plane by yourself, um, you do your own thing, and that's totally fine. But that's not necessarily the only way that you could solo travel. Um, one way that I personally think is a fun way to solo travel, especially if you're not quite ready to just go um, and you know do everything on your own is booking your like a tour group or a trip um, where you don't know anybody now you're probably thinking like that doesn't really sound like solo travel but it kind of is when you think about it you're getting on that plane by yourself you're going to a completely new place by yourself and you're being submerged in a tour group but you literally don't know anybody um, in fact, one of my friends right now, she's kind of going to be doing the exact same thing. So she is headed off to India in about a month um, and she's solo traveling, but she'll be solo traveling with a group of like 10 or 15 other women. Um, so it kind of takes the pressure off of thinking that you're going to do everything alone and it, it allows you to kind of relax a little bit. Um, but it's still solo travel. At least I think it's solo travel. Um, another way that you can kind of think about solo traveling without it just being going AWOL and going on your own is um, volunteering or interning abroad. Now this is kind of a really cool way not only to meet new people but to um, get to explore a new place by yourself, really get in touch with some locals, and also hopefully make some sort of impact while you're going. Now I will say that if you are gonna volunteer or intern abroad, definitely do your research before. There's lots of different kinds of groups that are all kind of achieving different things. Some you go for like a few days, some you could go for months on end, and you really wanna make sure that the types of uh, volunteer groups that you're going with are really gonna make um, you know, a positive impact. It's not like you're gonna just go there and do things for a few days and that be it. For me, I really like to find groups that I know are gonna have sustainable change where you have an opportunity to teach or share a skill and really leave like a lasting positive impact on the community that you're going to be with. Um, it also is a really interesting way to kind of um, take a stab at your passions. So when you're solo traveling, it can sometimes feel um, a little bit overwhelming, but if you have a really clear focus or a really clear goal of what you want to accomplish when you're going, it doesn't seem quite as lonesome or quite so much like you are quote unquote solo. Um, I actually did this when I went to India last year. I spent about a month in a nonprofit in Kolkata and I reached out to them beforehand. I made sure I knew what I was getting into and I knew what kind of skills I was going to 
like bring with me. Um, and that kind of helped me focus in on my trip a little bit more, feel like I was doing something really productive while I was traveling. And also, um, you know, be solo without really being solo. Like I had um, this awesome family network by the end of the trip because, you know, you're in the office with the people that you're volunteering with. Most of them happen to be from Kolkata or other parts of India. So everyone was pretty much local. And I didn't really ever feel like I was solo, even though I was taking the trip by myself. So that's a cool way to do it. Um, another really awesome way to travel solo without really being alone all the time is doing a homestay or, um, you know, working at a hostel or staying with a local family. Those are all really good ways to travel to a new place completely by yourself, but already have kind of like a network in place that you can tap into. So there's a really great website, for example, called Workaway, and you can actually sign up for them. You pay like um, a yearly fee. It's pretty inexpensive for the most part, but essentially after you sign up for that, you can go anywhere in the entire world, you know, volunteer at uh, one of the places that is listed on there. And then you can, you know, uh, stay for a few days, you can stay for a month, however long you really want. But along the way, you not only have the hosts that you'd be staying with or working with, but you also have some of the other volunteers that are also deciding to do work away. Um, another thing that fits kind of into that is, you know, showing up to a place and volunteering at a hostel. I did that for about a month and um, it was awesome. I had no intention of actually doing it you know, before I went, but I was running a little bit low on money. Um, I was kind of, you know, feeling like I was ready to go home, but not sure if I should go home yet. So working in that hostel, I was automatically surrounded by, you know, a big group of people. Um, and again, I didn't really feel all that alone. So it was kind of nice. Um, another way to, and this one is kind of solo and kind of not, it, this is like my cheat, but um, if you want to travel solo, but you're, you know, you, you want to go to a new place, but you don't want to be alone alone, and you don't necessarily want to make new friends, what I really like to do is I will tap into my network of friends, and I'll see if I have a friend or maybe a friend of a friend that lives in the place that I'm going to. So I know um, a few of my friends in general have done this. They've reached out to like their old college friends. They've reached out to old coworkers who live in different countries and they'll stay with them for a few days. Now the reason I call this a cheat day or a cheat um, solo trip is because you're alone yet you're still surrounded with people who are familiar to, to you. They're at least your friends or at least friends of friends and it doesn't feel quite as isolating um, to be alone. It also is kind of solo because even though you might be staying at their place, um, you're never really you know, with them 100% of the time, like you might be if you went on a trip with a friend. So the perk of this one is you get your solo time, you get your time with your friend or your friend's friend, and all in all, you're still accomplishing this big um, feat of solo traveling without it feeling quite as, um, you know, nerve wracking or uncertain. Um, you know, you have a network that's already kind of in place. Um, so yeah, as you can see, there are tons and tons of ways for you to travel solo. Um, without it fitting into that one definition that we talked about, which is buying your airplane ticket, shooting off somewhere random in the world, and just being alone. Now, don't get me wrong. If that's what you wanna do, definitely go for it. Like, sometimes you need those moments. In fact, when you go solo traveling, you'll often find that you kinda of wish you had some time alone where you can sneak away and just, you know, enjoy the alone time. Um, so, as much as you may want that or may not want that, there are so many different options that you get to choose from. And even in one trip, you can mix and match and do pretty much whatever you want, right? So you can um, initially go on a solo trip where you wanna maybe stay to yourself a little bit or just see what happens. And then maybe halfway through your trip, you decide to do a volunteering program or stay at a homestay with a family that's like local to the area. So there are so many different ways that you can um, make solo travel happen. So if you are holding yourself back and telling yourself that you don't wanna solo travel because it is gonna to be too lonely or because um, solo just isn't for you, you're not meant to be alone, definitely try to like erase that from your mind because um, there are lots of different ways that you can make this happen without it feeling quite as scary. So yeah, that's kind of what I have for today. Um, Again, if you have any questions or any comments, feel free to leave them below. Leave them down here, share the love. Um, and I'll be back on tomorrow with another one. Bye, everybody.